we're here to talk about certainly an issue that I think has certainly dominated state of New York, state government, the country, uh, but particularly the last several months here in New York, which is the continued approach that our state, including Governor Hochul, the continued approach to managing, governing during this pandemic that our conference and many New Yorkers not only feel is wrong, but the data does not back up the policies. And I want to be clear, you know, today we, we are not in the same space today that we were in the spring of 2020. In other words, we know more today. We know more about COVID. We're now into the third, if you would, iteration, the third strain. We have vaccines. The public is educated. And I would challenge anyone, if you look at the policies that New York State under Cuomo and Hochul have put forward, the mandates, the executive orders, I would dare anyone to show me a tangible metric difference between New York State and other states across the country. Deaths were doing as bad, if not worse, than most, if not all other states. Rates, hospitalizations, all those things. We have failed to, all the policies have failed to achieve at least the ends that we were told they would achieve. And it's gotten to the point where we, a lot of elected leaders no longer feel they even need to, to, to explain or justify these policies. That just doing them, it, it's anyone who, anyone who challenges those, you must be a COVID denier. I want to be very clear. Our conference, Senator Ort and the men and women behind me, we, no one is denying the reality and the significance of the pandemic we've lived through the last two years. There is a difference in, in disagreeing with policies and in looking at data and being practical about, are, is this working? That is a different and should be welcomed as opposed to denying the existence of something. Our colleagues, many of them will, will force that false narrative. They will say, if, if, you're, if you don't think mandates are right, well, that's because you're, you're, you're for recklessness, lawlessness, you're a COVID denier. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. And when you look at the policies, not only have they not stopped New York from the deaths we've had, the cases we've had, but I would argue they've actually exacerbated other problems that we now have that other states don't. Unemployment. Once, in a, once in a, upon this time, we lionized our healthcare workers. Lionized. We, were, they, we, we told everyone they were heroes, and we were right. But in a short span, some of those same workers, they have lost their jobs because they didn't get a vaccine or a booster. And let's be clear on that too. We told people, get a vaccine, get a booster if you're in healthcare, you have to get it or you'll be out of a job or you won't be able to feed your family. We know for a fact, undeniably, that people who are vaccinated and boosted can still get COVID and still spread COVID. So why would we continue to force healthcare workers? To, why would we not allow a test option? We have tests to stay in school. Why wouldn't we have a test to stay at your job? Especially when we need healthcare workers. If we're going to continue to battle the pandemic and the virus, we need people to do it. It isn't just going to happen. The National Guard isn't the final answer. Many of those National Guard members, by the way, guess what they do in their civilian jobs? They're nurses, they're in healthcare, so you're not actually adding anybody to the mix, you're just swapping uniforms. We have contributed to the healthcare worker shortage that was there before and is now worse because of the mandates, because of these policies. And I would argue it hasn't saved anybody. Those mandates haven't worked. And we could go through a list of data that would verify that. So what we're calling for is a transition from mandates to guidance. Let's, I, in this conference, trust New Yorkers, and I would argue that the governor and my colleagues across the aisle do not. If they did, 
they wouldn't have to rely on mandates. They would have you believe that absent the government, New Yorkers wouldn't know what to do. Absent the government, New Yorkers couldn't possibly be safe. Absent the mandates, it would be, we'd all, you know, the death numbers would be a record, record highs. That's simply not true. New Yorkers know what to do. They know they've been doing it themselves across various parts of the state for the entire pandemic. Business owners want to protect their customers. Nurses want to protect their patients. Parents want to protect their families. Teachers want to protect their students. It doesn't mean because it's coming from here. It's people, I trust New Yorkers at this point in the pandemic, two years in, to make the right decision. And we should continue to put out guidance and New Yorkers will pay attention. We should continue to put out education and information and New Yorkers will pay attention. But weaponizing the government to divide people in a way that has not helped stop the spread, but what it has done, we've got people advocating for permanent at-home schooling. Permanent. Nothing could be more harmful to the future of New York than forcing students to be permanently at home. Distance learning, from what I've seen, it just means kids are distanced from learning. And that is not an answer. We have demonized people, demonized communities around this notion, and the science simply doesn't back it up at this point. The data doesn't back it up. And whether it's education, childcare, healthcare, or just good old fashioned common sense, we need to transition to a new phase in this, in this pandemic. And I would remind everybody, we need to learn, we've been saying this for a long time, we need to learn to live, we're gonna have to learn to live with COVID. I don't know that COVID is going anywhere tomorrow. I wish it would, but I don't know that it is. And living with COVID does not mean your child being at home for the rest of his education or her education. It does not mean forcing healthcare workers to get a vaccine that doesn't actually stop the spread or transmissibility of the virus. It may protect the, the nurse from ending up in the hospital, but it doesn't prevent her or him from transmitting the virus to a possible patient. So let's be smart. Let's look at the, the data. Let's move to guidance, focus on guidance. New Yorkers will listen. I trust New Yorkers. And it's time Governor Hochul and my colleagues across the aisle do the same.